Next Talks episode and today with Kate Hurlick, who is the Senior Vice President, Head of Global Portfolio Commercialization at Grunendal. Kate, how are you? I'm very good. Thank you very much. It's sunny here in the UK, so it's all good. Fantastic. So let's start with the tough questions which we prepared for you today. And my first one is uh, really so frankly speaking, you radiate uh, some special positive energy. Is such positive aura part of your leadership style? You know, that's so nice of you to say. What a compliment and a wonderful way to uh, spend a Thursday afternoon. But um, I don't know. I think it's just me. I think it's my personality. And, and I feel really, really fortunate that what I do every day is actually something that is quite tangible to most people. Working in the field of pain is so rewarding because you know what pain feels like. I know what pain feels like. Our listeners know what pain feels like. And so to know what that feels, that relief feels like, and to know that I'm part of that is super inspiring. And I think that it is important that we all can be proud of what we're doing. And if we can just remember that and keep that in our, in our center, it's important. So I spend time talking about that because it, it gives me energy and hopefully it gives our teams energy so that we can all be even more proud and give you more energy to the search for relieving people's pain. So hopefully it's infectious and it gets people the energy to keep going fantastic very contagious indeed <laughs> next question what was the best leadership advice you received and that still inspires you every day oh this is a tough one because i don't i've taken i've learned so much from so many people you know um over the course of my career and i think one of the best i don't know if it was advice so Dario, I'm going to be a little off piece, but it was watching a great leadership in, in action, right? So watching someone role model great leadership. And actually that stuck with me and is a big part of how I hope I lead now, but also how we're trying to transform the culture at Grunenthal, where I work now um, in our new customer experience-based transformation. So I remember sitting in a meeting at a, a probably four jobs ago, three bosses ago, and I remember sitting in this meeting and I'd been part of different sessions, I'm sure we all have, where you're presenting an idea and getting approval for something, getting budget for something, getting something going. And I remember presenting something and the conversation in the room happened in the room, candidly, difficultly and openly. All the other meetings I'd been in before that, you go, you present an idea, you turn around, you leave, and then they talk about you afterwards or the idea, and or there's a side chat in a hallway, and it's unclear how the decision gets made. And actually, this gentleman who was my boss, he put it all out on the table, and he depersonalized the decision, and he made it a really difficult chat, but it was a very candid and open chat. So everyone knew what the conversation was about. They knew where the tricky bits were. And it wasn't, and it was done deliberately. And that kind of candor, brutal candor, but within an environment where it wasn't personal, so therefore it was a psychologically safe environment, is what I aspire to. Watching him in action, I try and do this because it enables people to have real conversations. There's nothing worse than going into a meeting, discussing something, everyone agreeing, and then people leaving and disagreeing. And the disagreeing outside the door doesn't help anybody. It doesn't make us better. It doesn't make us come up with new ideas and inspire and innovate. So that that candor within an environment of safety by with really, really helping people say what they really think without fear of getting you know, ridiculed is crucial. And that's what allows us to innovate and the type of leader I aspire to be. I know I don't get it right every day, but that's what I think uh, can really help us. So Anthony, wherever you are, thank you. Fantastic answer, thanks a lot, Kate. Next question. Uh, based on our previous calls, we saw that uh, ins we saw how inspiring you are actually, and you also mentioned that uh, your kids are inspiring you as well. So, uh, meaning uh, how to inspire people to follow you, uh, especially from this aspect uh, between work, personal uh, life balance. I kind of well, you know, I, I 
first of all, thank you again for telling me that I'm inspiring. I think I'm quite normal, right? So <laughs> I think there's a few elements of my personality. Also, I'm from Canada originally. Our culture is a relatively informal culture. And I think that these days, with everything being so fast-paced, fast the less formal we can be, the easier it is. So I think I've got a few things that are just natural to me that, that are I'm quite lucky about. My kids, um, I have two girls who are age six and nine. And it's really important to me that they understand that I have what I'm doing is for a purpose. Because I, obviously, I'll say to them, I can't talk to you now. I have to work. And you know they need to understand why, right? So I spend a lot of time explaining to them why, because mama is trying to help people feel better, have less pain. They know what pain feels like. Scooting to school yesterday, the older one fell off her scooter and hurt her knee. So obviously knowing that what the relief feels like is important. But I also think it's important for them to have a role model who is a leader and to see that what leading is. And, and they often joke that what mama does for a living is just talk to people. All I do is talk to people which is quite funny to them because they don't think of that as a job. But I, I think that, that that's crucial and getting that balance right. But again, it comes back also to the lesson I learned from Anthony, which is just being transparent with them about when I can talk to them and can't talk to them and why and making those trade-offs constantly. And I think that, that is, that's probably at the core of where it comes from. I also think that the... People, you know, there's, there's this idea that goes on around the world about authenticity, right? It's an overuse. It's like value, innovation, all many of these things. But when, when I share my own struggles with others, uh, with balancing life and, and everything, they will more often share theirs. And again, it goes back to this bringing their full self to work, their, all their ideas and being all in. And the more we can get out of people by giving them the space to balance their lives, I think the better it is. I think COVID has been a great example. Look at us, we're chit-chatting on, on webs in my messy home and, uh, and, and yet we can still get the work done. And so having that openness to discuss that and manage it, I think is, is also part of it. Mm, certainly. Uh, you mentioned that charity plays a very essential role in your life. And did this somehow help you to change yourself as a leader by helping other people? I don't know if it changed me, but it definitely reinforced one of the values that's dear to me, which is not, which is, I don't know how to articulate it perfectly. I always, I live in the UK and they are so much more articulate than I am. But um, I, I think this humility as a leader is really important. And when you give to others, you're reminded how fortunate you are and to not take that for granted and to really, it's important that we all have that humility because then that also breeds respect for others and others' perspectives. I was privileged this week, in fact, to be part of a team development meeting, unlike one I had ever been before. And the purpose of the meeting during these COVID times, when we're all in our little video, two-dimensional engagements with each other, very transactional meetings, we spent three hours with an external coach asking us to speak about our foundations as people. And some people shared some extremely personal things. And it was humbling that we realized that so-and-so had been kidnapped as a child and what that meant for who they were. Another person lost a dear family member and that formed them. And that brings us closer together, recognizing the, that every single one of us has challenges in life and needs some charity from others. And it's a charity of, of being and this humility that helps us all remember that behind the transactional person that's trying to finish the slide deck and handle the deliverable and get the customer to do X, Y, and Z is a her human who just wants to do a good job and has been formed in sometimes adversity and maybe needs a little bit of an extra help. So I think that that, that also comes with the, the remembering that we're all just people trying to do our best. Exactly, fully agree. Let's move forward to the best part. Uh, of course, this part was also amazing, but uh, to the part where we ask very simple questions and we expect a very short answer or the quick fire question section. And my first question to you is best advice you ever received? Best advice I ever received was from my dad. My dad said, Take the job for what you're going to do every day, not for the promise of some future job later, because life is for now. Exactly. Fully agree. 
Uh, favorite musician? Definitely Ben Folds. He used to be, he's a pianist, part of a band called Ben Folds Five. I'm a pianist as well, I play piano, but he has massive hands, so I struggle to do the chords, but it's still super cool, super fun. He's really authentic, talks about real life experience and the music's just great. Fantastic. What do you miss most from Canada? The space and the Canadians. Oh. Kind of two things, the Canadians and the space. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nature as well, or? <laughs> Pardon? Nature comes with space, right? So. Yes, exactly. So the the volume of nature. So I live in the village in the UK, which uh, I look outside. There's loads of trees. Five minutes from me is a huge woods that I can go hiking and biking in, but it stops then, and then there's a road in a village in Canada that would just go on for days. So yeah. And last question: One word which describes you. Me describes me, right? Exactly. I thought about this one, but I, I, I struggle with this one, Dario, but I have to say that I'm a believer. Okay, nice answer. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So Kate, we came to the end. It was a great pleasure to welcome you on Next Talks. Uh, again, thanks, thank you so much for taking part. Uh, have a nice rest of the day and take very good care. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.